Sekiro Shadows Die Twice is an action-adventure game developed by From Software, the team responsible for the famously tough Soulsborne series. However, Sekiro is set to take an exciting departure from the previous formula. Here are four ways Sekiro differs from the Soul series and four things they have in common. In Soulsborne games, players first choose their class, or origin as it's referred to in Bloodborne. These classes determine the equipment and stats of the player's character. Sekiro switches out these RPG elements for a fixed protagonist with an ever-expanding set of skills. The character, Sekiro, is a katana-wielding shinobi with a prosthetic arm that can be upgraded as the game progresses, paving way for new abilities and skills rather than interchangeable weapons and equipment. Sekiro's character progression is done through a skill system, as opposed to Soulsborne's stat system, which relied on accumulating souls, or blood echoes, to raise stats individually. Now, players are awarded skill points for defeating enemies and bringing down bosses. Points can be attributed to multiple skill trees, three of which are Shinobi, Prosthetic and Ashina. Each skill tree contains three types of skills. Combat Arts, which are offensive techniques to damage enemies, Shinobi Martial Arts, which offer ways to counter or evade your opponent in combat, and Latent Skills, which have an everlasting effect outside of battle, such as boosting the power of healing items. Stealth is a vital part of Sekiro, whereas in Dark Souls, the only stealth option afforded to players was the chance to backstab enemies, if they were lucky enough to get behind them unnoticed. As a ninja, it's only fitting players can crouch in long grass to remain hidden from passing enemies, or hang from ledges, hug walls, and sneak up on unsuspecting targets before delivering the killer blow. Sekiro's grappling hook completely transforms the way you move through the game. You're able to dart across rooftops and quickly escape from the heat of battle, moving to a more advantageous position. This makes Sekiro a more vertically open world compared to Soulsborne, and the grappling hook can open up vast new areas if you're willing to explore. Despite moving away from the Soulsborne formula, Sekiro still harbors some of its DNA. For example, the world is vast and interconnected much like the first Dark Souls. Exploring a new path often brings you back to a familiar place, or opens up a shortcut to somewhere you've been before, giving the impression the world exists seamlessly as one. Unsurprisingly, Sekiro is a game that doesn't pull its punches. From Software is cementing its reputation of making games that challenge a player's skill, and the removal of some RPG mechanics may actually make it tougher, as you can't rely on high-leveled weapons or overpowered armor. While dying remains core to Sekiro, it works slightly differently to Soulsborne. Rather than being sent back to the last checkpoint, Sekiro can choose to resurrect immediately after he is slain, and resume the battle from where he left off. This ability proves invaluable against the tougher bosses, and can often help when you need to deliver that final blow. You get two charges of this ability. One full charge is automatically granted from respawning or resting at checkpoints, and the other can be charged up manually by killing enemies over time. However, if you use up one resurrection ability, the second one becomes locked to prevent you from overusing it, and you'll have to work to unlock it by defeating more enemies. If you die again without a full charge, you'll be sent back to the last sculptor's idol, the Sekiro equivalent of Souls' bonfires. Upon death, players' money and experience points are halved permanently. This can only be avoided with unseen aid, where the gods take pity on the player and let them keep their XP after they die. It's not guaranteed, though. The odds of this happening start at 30%, but are influenced by key events and items you discover. However, like in Dark Souls 2, where a player's max HP reduced after each respawn, Sekiro has consequences for players who die and resurrect too often, by unleashing a deadly disease known as Dragon Rot. This stops infected allies such as traders from interacting with Sekiro and significantly reduces your chances of getting unseen aid. Sekiro has enough throwbacks to the classic Soulsborne formula to keep From Software fans eager for a new challenge, but equally has a fresh approach to make it a welcome departure from the studio's previous games. For more on Sekiro, 
Check out eight things you need to know here on IGN.